Um, today we're going to talk about diet tips to reduce allergies and inflammation, and the subtitle here is where there is smoke, there is fire. Okay, and because if you have a symptom of something, that means there's smoke, and you shouldn't ignore that smoke. It means that there's something burning in there. And if you have allergies or signs of inflammation, then you want to try to reduce that and eliminate the causes of the problem. A lot of people that have allergies will treat the allergies with all sorts of medications, but um, you're better off trying to eliminate the causes. And that's not always easy, but you should do the best that you can. My name is Dr. Michael Rothman. I'm board certified in internal medicine and emergency medicine. I work here at Rahway Hospital in the emergency department. I also have a private practice in East Brunswick called MD Wellness and Aesthetics. Okay, so let's just look at what allergies are. Some of the symptoms, hives, swelling, you may wheeze, may have shortness of breath, you may itch, you could have a rash, runny nose, congestion, watery eyes. This is the smoke, okay? If you suffer from these symptoms a lot, it means something's going on, you're having this allergic reaction. What is this? What is your body trying to tell you? And should, what, you should do, what should you do about it? Now, if you went to the emergency department with an allergic reaction, we see this all the time, what would we do there? Well, the first thing that we would do is we would give you some antihistamines, right? Benadryl or something like that. We use it, you may use this at home, okay? We use it intravenously in the emergency department. And what histamines do, or antihistamines do, they actually block something called histamine. And they block the histamine from binding to the histamine receptor, okay? So every chemical works, at least this is what we're taught, like a lock and a key. So this, this receptor there, and the histamine gets into the receptor and causes this reaction down the line. So the antihistamines actually block the receptor. It can't get in there, okay? So that's what antihistamines do. What else do we use in the ER? We use epinephrine, also known as adrenaline. And what that does is it actually opposes the downstream effects of the histamine. So the histamine will bind to the receptor, and then downstream we have all these effects, and I'm gonna talk about that in a, in a few minutes. So the epinephrine, the adrenaline, can actually combat those symptoms and, and try to oppose the effects. And lastly, the other thing that we use in the emergency department are steroids. And that actually can, they don't work right away. They take time. The his, antihistamines will work very quickly. The epinephrine can work within minutes. And the steroids work within a few hours. They actually prevent the release of the histamine by modulating or, or moderating, regulating what's called prostaglandin balance. And I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes as well. So an allergic reaction, it is caused by excessive histamine release. And this histamine causes vasodilatation. That's one of the effects. It means it dilates your blood vessels. Okay, and that's why your blood pressure can drop. That's why you turn red, because it's actually blood going out into your system. Those hives that you see is, is really the blood and, and inflammatory fluid oozing. Um, this is also leads to inflammation. It causes smooth muscle contraction. This can cause spasms. Um, if you suffer from menstrual symptoms, okay, a lot of uh, monthly premenstrual um, spasms, uh, this is actually part of the same reaction. And histamine also activates part of your nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system. So too much histamine is very bad. Now we need a certain amount of it because um, it has all these effects. Histamine, it's stored in your mast cells and other immune cells in your body. It's there for a reason. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But, well, right now, actually, it's an important modulator of your immune response. You actually need it to combat foreign invaders. It's released in response to stress. It's released in response to infection. So it's there, basically, as an army of chemicals to fight a foreign invader. So you know, we don't, nothing in our body happens... Um, we don't have things in our body, poisons there for, you know, just to poison us. Um, there, every single thing in your body that's supposed to be there serves a purpose. It's when the, the body's uh, balance is out of control is when you end up with a lot of symptoms. So too much is no good. This can lead to allergies, pain, inflammation, what we call autoimmune disease. Your immune system is just going crazy. On the other hand, too little is no good either. And you have a lack of immunity it can actually lead you to be susceptible to cancer or infection. So we need to have a balance. And what I'm going to talk about this afternoon is how do we balance out these histamine levels? How do we keep it not too much, not too little, 
most people are dealing with actually too much. And this gets me into the Goldilocks principle. And if you've ever heard me speak, I always talk about the Goldilocks principle because basically we're talking about balance. And everybody knows the story of Goldilocks and the three bears and the soup was too hot or the soup was too cold or the soup was just right. Well, you want your soup to be just right. You don't want to have too much or too little of anything, at least anything that's good for you. Okay, so there's this U-shaped curve. Too much of or too little of something's no good. Too much of something's no good. This applies to things that we need, okay? Nutrients or things in our body like histamine that, that are part of our normal system. So for nutrients and orthomolecular substances, there's an optimal value of nutrients and orthomolecular substances exist. Too much is no good, too little. Just let me just define what orthomolecular is. Ortho means the same. The same molecule that should be there in the first place. For example, calcium. Too much calcium is no good, too little is no good. Pick any mineral that's, that is part of your body. Pick any vitamin, amino acid that's part of your body. Too much is no good, too little is no good. Now, when it comes to poisons, on the other hand, there is no amount, optimal amount of a poison. Less is always better. So you have to distinguish between things that are nutrients and things that are poisons. Now, unfortunately, a lot of things that probably some people are eating right now are actually poisons and you may not realize this. And if you eat too many of these things, and remember, less is always better, so anything that you're eating is actually too much, you can lead to problems. Now, someone just asked me before about omega-3s and omega-6s, and I just want to talk, there's a balance between the omega-6s and the omega-3 fatty acids, and omega-3s have been probably the most hype nutritional supplement maybe of all time. If you listen to AM radio, and you're sitting in your car, you cannot go f more than a few minutes without hearing about the wonders of omega-3. They'll even give you a free bottle so that you can enjoy the benefits right away. There's now prescriptions omega-3s. What is so wonderful about omega-3? Okay, well, omega-6s, and these are found in things like canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, all these oils, they're actually pro-inflammatory. And we need a certain amount of pro-inflammation in order to help fight infections and those other things. And the omega-3s have essentially anti-inflammatory effects. So these guys can counteract the effects of those guys. But if you're eating too many of these, is the solution to your problem to increase the amount of these? Well, two wrongs do not make a right. Okay, Three rights make a left. Two wrongs do not make a right. If you pound yourself with these things and have all sorts of inflammation, yes, you can take omega-3s and they will help treat your symptoms, maybe, okay? And, you know, the, there's a lot of data on this. Yes, they can help reduce your arthritis pain. They can help lower your blood pressure. They can help with this and that. Every single claim that's made about omega-3s to a certain degree is true, but does that mean eating them is, you know, adding these to your diet is good for you. Um, the, the solution here is really get rid of these things. These are poisonous things. We need a very small amount of omega-6s in our system, a tiny amount. By the way, we also need a very tiny amount of omega-3s. So this is a case where you're going to end up with too many omega-3s in your system. All of these oils, these are all called polyunsaturated oils. Poly means many. Unsaturated means that there's a lot of these these uh, bonds that, that don't have hydrogen on them, they're, they're sort of, they're fragile. They have a lot of effects in your body, but they're very fragile. That's why you really shouldn't cook with these things, okay? We fry with them, okay, because they're easily burned up. Well, you don't want to put burnt stuff in your body. Um, let me just segue off to talk about oxidative stress for a moment. You guys have heard of that term, right? Antioxidants, oxidative stress. So, when we make energy, we burn stuff to actually make energy. Our, our metabolism is like a fire. Um, and then in the process of burning those things, we, can, we create, we put off heat, and that heat is called free radicals. And um, those free radicals can actually burn our tissues, cause aging. We have these antioxidants that are our defenses against the free radicals. So if you eat things that are burnt up, you're eating oxidized materials. This is very, very poisonous. This will set off your immune system. Now, you can counteract it to a certain degree with the omega-3s, but these are also easily oxidized. In fact, they're even more fragile than the omega-6s.